another issue when it comes to long-term memory that we've already talked a little bit about is the formation of habits. Right? Well, don't we love habits? What are some of the habits that you have? Okay, how about I'll narrow it down. What are some habits when it comes to technology? Control, delete. Control, delete. Right? That we don't barely need to even look at the keyboard. Yes? Leaving everything on my desktop. Leaving everything on your desktop. <laughs> I know a lot of people who do that, especially my father. <laughs> I walk in, he's like, you know, I can't find anything. I'm like, yeah, neither can I. But it could be very well organized. What else? I can tell you my habit, having 20 bazillion windows open at the same time. And then I'm like, what is wrong with this stupid computer? Oh, I need a faster computer because obviously this is getting old. Oh wait, how many windows do I have open? Oh, about 50, huh? Hmm, maybe I should close some and restart. So that's a habit that I have. Is that a good habit? Not, it, well, it depends. Now, can you think of any good habits that you have? Clear the history. <laughs> Clear the history. <laughs> That's a very interesting <laughs> habit. I would love to know why, but I won't ask you in class. <laughs> yes? I'm sorry? Yeah. Press, you get to the habit of pressing the button to eject your USB drive. That is an excellent habit to have. Right now, who knows how we form habits? By repetition. By repetition. You just keep doing it and doing it and doing it until it becomes unconscious. So when you do a task repeatedly, it becomes easier to do, and it becomes a habit. Habits can be really good things. And they can also be not so good things. We want to remember this when we're designing. Because as designers, when we're designing a system, we want to create interfaces that don't cause our users to create bad habits. What we want to do is instead is let's try to take advantage of this habit creation. So we can try to design habits, try to design a workflow, for example, that's going to make things easier for our users. So let's take a quick look at workflows, because you're kind of sitting there saying, I have no idea what you're talking about. OK, let's look at, let's say, a, an, an accounting package. And let's say you are creating an accounting package for someone who, what they're going to be doing is they're just doing accounts receivable. This is money you're taking in. All right, you have a ledger, which is where you have um, all your balances and all that fun and exciting accounting stuff. Right? You have a specific process to go through to enter your, you know, your, your, the money that's coming in. Now, I watch some people who've used some of these accounting systems where they go and they open the ledger. Okay, they have to enter things. They go to a new window. I type this in. Oh, wait, now they have to go to another window. Okay, I'll go click the menu up here. Oh, it opens another. Type over here. Okay, now I have to go back to this window. Okay, let me find that window. Type this in. And they kind of do this continuously. Sometimes they make mistakes because they kind of forget what window they need to go to. What would be a better design? I'll give you a hint. And this is actually a hint that I usually give when it comes to my father and installing viruses on his computer. All right, with error messages. When you go to a website and an error message pops up, what do you usually click? Oh, you guys do X because you're smart. What do most people? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a habit. Click OK. It's just, yes, OK, install that virus. <laughs> Bad habit, right? How do you turn that into a good habit? With our example. Okay, would, wouldn't it make sense, right, if you actually look at the workflow where if the user needs to go to the next screen, right, they type in what they need, and they click that OK to go to the next screen, as opposed to having to go and look for, go up to the menu and look for the next screen that they need. This will help them form a habit if you create that into their workflow. 
that will make their lives much easier. You see the difference? Some of you are nodding. Others of you are looking at me like I sprouted two heads. Okay, so if we look at e-commerce, for example, we tend to have a, a set process, a step-by-step -step process that we go through, right? Right, we type in you know, our, 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 our shipping and billing address, right? We click OK. We get to, I can't remember the order anymore. We um, then ask you, it says, here's your total. Give me your, your credit card information. Type that in. Click OK. OK, here is your order. Do you want to confirm your order? Click OK. Right, very easy, very step by step. That is a workflow that fits in with users. It's a lot easier than having you jump all over the place. How well would it work if you had an e-commerce site where you have to go to a different menu item to go, let's say, into your account to pull your billing and shipping information? Yeah, sometimes they redirect you to another website and to another website to click here, and then you go to another website and PayPal, and then go back to whatever <coughs> the, the website you're buying something. Right, so sometimes they'll send you to another website automatically. Other times they'll tell you go to PayPal. Sometimes they'll send you back automatically. I don't know if you can do that in PayPal. Actually, I haven't used PayPal in a while. Or they tell you you have to go back and verify your order. I know years ago I had to verify my order before clicking OK in PayPal. So big difference in terms of user experience and workflow. Imagine that's what you're doing all day. It can make a huge difference. Now, the thing we want to remember when it comes to habits and why it's so critical when it comes to helping users form positive habits or not form negative habits, is that habits are very difficult to break by volition. In other words, you try to stop that habit, it's really hard. Has anyone here tried to break a habit that you have? OK, the rest of you are just lying to me, or you love your habits. It's really hard, isn't it? Same thing with an interface. Because you want to remember that habits are automatic tasks, right? With their automatic tasks, we usually don't even have to think about it, right? They tend to be unconscious without our conscious thought. Now, here's another great thing about habits and about automatic tasks. We can do multiple automatic tasks at the same time. But we can only do one task at a time that is not a habit that is not automatic. Now, this surprises a lot of people because we talk about multitasking all the time, right? Right, so you have you know, some of these uh, companies that want someone who can multitask really well. Except if you look at the research, does anyone know what the research actually says about multitasking? I'm sorry? We're yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not good at it. Right? You're less efficient, you're less effective, and it's more error prone if you are truly trying to multitask. Why? Because of something called interference. This, by the way, makes a great midterm exam question. Doing two tasks simultaneously where neither is automatic will degrade your performance on each task. Now, why is that? Because when it comes to tasks that are not habits, that are not automatic tasks, we're not actually focusing on two things at the same time. We're actually switching between them very, very quickly. And that causes our performance to degrade. But the more predictable, automatic, and unconscious a task is, the less it will degrade or compete with other tasks. If it's automatic, if it's a habit. Now, remember we talked about a locus of attention, right? That's what this, this uh, lecture is primarily about. If you are focusing on one thing and you have to switch to another thing, how quickly do you think you can do that? Generally, you can't do that very, very easily, right? We actually have to engage our consciousness to be able to make the shift. 
We have to tell ourselves, I'm going to focus on this. Oh, wait, I have to focus on this. This is a conscious act. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so like trying to go between a phone and a calculator, you actually have to consciously change the way you're thinking about it. It does take at least a few seconds usually. So we want to remember that we have to maintain our conscious control to go between these different tasks if they are not automatic. It's our singular locus of attention. But also remember that we can have automatic tasks at the same time. Now with habits, right, we can train to, to, so someone to use habits. We cannot train someone to not create a habit though. That's another thing. If we do something repeatedly, it's probably, there's a very high probability that it's going to become a habit. So if you design an interface that causes a user to do the same thing over and over again, they're probably going to form a habit. Not guaranteed, but probably. Now when it comes to memory, do you know what we tend to do? If we take a bunch of discrete steps and we tend to do it over and over and over, do we still think of it as discrete steps? Right, we don't. We tend to chunk them together. Think about when I talked about how we drive. Right, when we first were driving, we were paying attention to all of these separate, distinct elements and distinct steps. Who thinks of that now? Nobody. So we tend to essentially chunk it. Chunking, by the way, is a great way of um, having a memory aid to remember more, like with phone numbers. Right, is it easier to remember single digits or to clump them into... Yeah, it's easier to clump them, isn't it? Especially if it's something like, um, I don't know, your year, your year of birth or someone's date of birth or something like that. Now, you want to remember that you can't interrupt sequences or habits that take longer than a few seconds unless it becomes your locus of control. All right, so if you have a habit of engaging in some activity, you want to stop in the middle of that habit, it has to be more than a few seconds longer, you're not going to be able to consciously stop it. So, if it's less than one or two seconds, you won't be able to stop it. Let's look at the implications for design on this. Hold on. I'm going to show you a quick video. And in fact, I think someone already mentioned this in class. Ah, hold on. Let me, hold on, let me check the sound. Hello, Mac. Mac is issued a salutation, cancel or allow. Allow, not a piece of it. You're returning Mac salutation, cancel or allow? Allow. Okay, what it is. Mac is asking a question, cancel or allow? Allow. He's trying to visit my new operating system. He sees a lot of security problems, so. He asked me to authorize pretty much anything I did. You were pointing out this is flaws, cancel or allow. Allow. I could turn him off, but then he wouldn't give me any warnings at all, and that would defeat the purpose. So. You were coming to a sad realization, cancel or allow. <laughs> allow. I love, they have such good commercials, don't they? They really do, regardless of whether you're a Mac or a PC person. Uh, this is the one that when the PS4 came out, like how to learn a game with PS4. Oh, no. Yeah. No. The Xbox One, they, they like how to learn a game with PS4, and they just keep the, the game to the first time. Because <laughs> <laughs> supposedly at first, the Xbox One, you couldn't learn a game. You got to like buy it. You know? Oh, wow. So PS4 made a commercial saying that, how to learn a game. I'm going to have to look, I'm gonna have to look for that. <laughs> yeah, keep it, talk about saying keep it simple, stupid. All right, that's, I'm going to look for that. That's a great example. All right, so what are two things, the two biggest things you noticed about that, that video? Was there some, anything obnoxious about it? Yes. It was really irritating. I'm trying to accomplish something, and here comes a pop-up. Cancel or allow. Trying to, oh, cancel or allow. What do you think that does to our attention? 
It breaks our attention. It breaks our pattern of thought, and it gets really annoying. So what do you think ultimately happens? You turn it off? <laughs> well, you might turn it off before you turn it off, because some people won't turn it off. You always say allow. You always say allow, because that's, that's what PC said constantly. You keep saying allow. Right, just like the, the clicking the OK button, like I told you my father does. OK, OK. Do you think he reads anything? No. no. Get this stupid thing out of my face. OK, oh yeah, now I have 10 viruses. I'll just call my daughter. She'll fix it. How many have a relative like that? OK, just about everybody. See, I can. Oh yeah, just, cl just click any. Like promotion they give you to the install. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Next, next, they keep popping up. <laughs> oh, oh, the toolbars, yes. I will go to my father's computer. He'll have like five toolbars. <laughs> you know, yeah, half the screen is toolbars. He will have like five, you know, four or five different antiviruses, some of which aren't real, and all that fun and exciting stuff. Why? They click next. Then. Because they click next. So what do you think Vista did in their design? Yeah, they didn't, they didn't take habit forming into account. They didn't take how we are going to react to this into account. So a lot of people got into that habit of just clicking. What is that? I guess allow, 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 allow. Sounds pretty simple, right? But realistically, how many of us would have really thought of that before if we didn't think about the user? What, what do you think the designers were thinking of when they designed that? Does it work? Is it going to keep the PC safe? Not thinking about how the user is going to react to it. So you want to remember that confirmation processes can be obnoxious. They can form habits. They can also keep you from forming a positive habit because it breaks your concentration. Right now. With a confirmation process, we talked about clicking OK. Can you think of another idea that might work so you don't form a habit? Uh, maybe like changing, if you do that many times, like if you change the, to do something else, they fuck you up. Like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, for example, if you're used to do one thing, like always click something or install some, or using some sort of program. Like when you try to install another program that is not, you know, like you used to work with it, like what you are like. So change the, the process each time? Okay, you may make them put a code in. So years ago, for security purposes, um, you would actually have to look up like a word in a book. On page 256, paragraph 4, word 5, type it in. How long did that last? No. Not very long. That also got annoying. Right? OK, what about asking them a question and making them type in an answer? Why do you want to do this? To make sure they're actually paying attention. What do you think? Good idea? Bad idea? <laughs> Right, so it would be really obnoxious. And also, if it's like, okay, write down the name of your cat, and it just wants you to type something in, do you think you can form a habit with that? Yeah. If all you have to do is type stuff in, you can form a habit. Actually, you can form a habit whether it's the same characters or not. If it's random, just, you know, who, you know, who goes like this? Uh, Here we go. I answered the question. OK. Or if it's cat, OK, my name, cat's name is cat. That's easy to type, C-A-T. Now I have my nice new habit. So we want to think really carefully about how we implement these things. I want to have those uh, characters at the bottom of, like, Oh, the random string. Yeah, those. Um, I think that's more. That's more so that they know you're a person, not a computer. Sometimes you can't actually read. Sometimes you can't actually read them, 
And I'll type it in. They're like, you're wrong. <laughs> OK, try again. I know that's a four. Yes? Did you know that the, the capture thing, those things, you only have to add to one of the words, right? Because the other one, Google uses it for research. And then you can type the right word, and they'll be something completely random. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to try that next time. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be nice of me, would it? All right, so we want to look at some effective strategies that can help us deal with any mistakes we may make, such as if we, we have formed a habit, right, and we have gone ahead and done a miscalculation. You know, like we deleted half of our hard drive. Oops. Oops. Yeah, my father-in-law did that, by the way. Uh, fortunately, we had already invented something that's very important that is first on my list. What is that? Undo. undo. I have to say I think undo is the greatest invention of the last two centuries. I use it all the time. And I have to have like 100 of them. You know, they ask you, do you want 10 or 20? Uh, not enough. A lot. Right, so undo, we want to make things safer. Instead of putting in some of this, all of this, uh, these, these limitations or some of, some of this added security, in some cases, how about just undo? Thank God for the recycle bin. Right, or was it in the Mac? In the Mac, it's a tra trash can? Recycle bin or the trash can? So what are some other things? We already talked about how making the action unpredictable will just be annoying. What about making something that's impossible for the user to do? We want to be safe. No, you cannot delete that file. What do you think? Be that would be obnoxious. That's not so good. Right? You can only control your users so much. That's another thing you need to remember. We already talked about making the user enter a reason or enter something like, what is your cat's name? Again, not such a good idea. So the one thing I want you to remember when you are dealing with design, even when you're dealing with you know, confirmation or security, there is no such thing as the perfect solution because you are always balancing things out. Pretty much any, any website, any system that I look at, I can find problems with. Because there's always something that you are having to compensate for. It's really important to remember that, especially when you are designing your own systems and interfaces. You can't take it personally. Very important to remember with assignment two. You want to take an objective look and make an informed decision.